In this episode, we are going to go over this program here. And this program is special because I finally got the B-axis of my Miano lathe to work. Also, the end of this video goes really in-depth on how the code is written for the CNC machine. So I completely understand if you want to just stop watching after the lathe is done running. That's the cool part anyway. Also, I haven't been able to diagnose the forward and backward motion of the drilling cycles here, but so far it hasn't hurt anything, just the cycle time has suffered just a little bit. So this is the part that we are going to be creating. Basically we're just going to face it with the main turret, which is the X and Z axis. So we're going to face it, chamfer it, spot drill it, then we're going to drill it, but that is with a completely different axis. And it's using, it's not using X or Z, it's going to use a B, and it only moves one direction, which is axial to the spindle. And then we're going to part it with the main turret, which is X and Z axis. So this is the problem child here if we want to use the B axis. How do we tell the program that we want this one to be the B and not the X and Z axis, which is the main turret? So in the tool library for this setup here, for this setup, and this is the drill that we use. So let's go in and edit that. For my situation here, I'm going to use turret 1. So for the main turret, which is the X and Y on every other tool, this is a 0. And that's default with the program. This one, I made the program, I made the post-processing program look at this number here if I want to use the B axis. So if I want to use the B axis, I turn this to a 1 for that specific tool. Now if we go to look at another tool, it'll say tool it will say turret zero in the post-processing data. And I also have it right here where it says turret number so I can actually see it when I go to look at the tool library for that specific program. So that's how I get it to run the B axis with a B word. So let's take a look at that in the post-processing program. When you go to post-processing something, you click the program or highlight it, whatever, and you go to post-process and then you select this thing right here, one of these and that determines which program it uses to make the code for your machine basically so I use this one if I want to use the b-axis this is my original FANUC OT turning which is for the Miano lathe I got this from Moria manufacturing holy crap this saved me so much time so I want to thank him for that uh, and then I went to modifying it to work with my b-axis so I use that and basically I just that's how it creates everything so when I go to post post it to my desktop and here we are there's the the facing cycle which is you can see the X and Z chamfer the spot drill and then here is the drill all of this right here and it only uses the B so it uses a B word right here and you'll see no X and no Z since it's only it's only moving in one direction where you'll see an X and a Z in the spot drilling cycle. So starting from the top here, M65 uses tool position 5 and that uses the offset for tool position 5 on the B axis. Uh, here's all positioning coordinates. Before we get into that, everything in the B axis also has to be between the G101 and G100 here. And then it gets called with this M40. So this is like a sub program within the program. And then M40 calls this program. So when FANUC moves through the program in the controller, it basically you'll see it skip all this. And then when it hits M40, it'll start and go through everything in between G101 and G100. And then M90 just basically says, okay, I want to wait for the B axis to complete everything before it goes on. You don't have to have this if you want to have the B axis and the main turret operate simultaneously or parallel whatever you want to call it so you don't have to have that but I just like to because I want to make sure that the B axis is 
the B axis is completely out of the way before the X and Z axis moves because that could cause some problems. And from here we can jump into Visual Studio and we can go to File, Open File and this is the post processing code which is a .cps so we'll open that up and here it is. So John Saunders at NYC CNC has a really good tutorial on how to edit code like this and this is a JavaScript code and I was lucky enough to learn Python at my previous job which I'm still kind of at and it kind of it kind of helped a lot understanding how everything works so basically this is just going to be a very brief overview of how I did things you have all these properties here to start off with so these are what you select whenever you go to post process code you can select anything here user defined properties cool same thing here and right here is where I define a variable called B axis so now I can use this B axis globally within any function is how I understand it and blah 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 nothing going on here Still nothing. so you know how at the beginning of every single code it sends everything home first so this is what it's doing here it sends everything home and that's for the X and Z axis main turret well I also want to do that with the B axis turret so I wrote in here to do a T70 which cancels the tool length offset for the B axis and then I put it to zero just to make sure that the B axis is at zero and that's perfect home for it and within that I have to make sure the B axis program is between a G101 and a G100 and then I have the M90 uh, to wait for the B axis to home and the M40 right here calls the program right here between the G101 and G100 It's kinda confusing but you just kinda need all that anytime you move the B axis for this specific machine here is the biggest one so that tool turret where I had said zero is for the X and Z axis main turret so this is literally what I select either 0, 1, 101, 102, 103, 104 you can, you can put that in there for the turret that you want to use for that specific tool in this case case one was not even here when I started modifying this program I just made this case right here a switching case I have almost no idea what it even does I just know that if you put a one right here I can put a one in fusion for that specific turret and then I can use it so it's the same thing case zero brings this tooling equals turret and this tool post equals rear it's exactly the same thing except I set variable B axis to one and that's used throughout this program so whenever basically I have a lot of if else statements that say if B axis equals one then do this but if it doesn't then do the normal thing so you can see here I set everything all the B axis to zero and every other one except this one for case one so this whole section here on section is getting the coordinates and writing them writing basically writing the program but I want to use the B like I said before instead of the Z so if B axis equals one then the Z output is now B so the Z output is, is the normal Z direction but I want to change that I want to make sure that Z is turned into a B for the B axis so it's moving it is moving in the Z direction but it's just changing the, where it would be a Z word is now changing it to a B word and of course we have to have a special M code to call the specific tool that we want so I had to go in here and say M tool number minus 10 so you saw before where it was M65 to call tool position 5 that's for a good reason so M61 through 66 is the tool positions for the B axis and in the controller they are actually labeled as 71 through 76 which is kinda confusing here T65 and that calls the tool offset for that specific tool whereas the M calls for the tool and rotates the turret again really confusing this took me a maybe a week to figure all this stuff out and a lot of pulling my hair out so we'll go on down here and see where the next B axis equals one and the next thing we come up to is where we put the G101 so this is the start of the B axis program within the main program so we start the G101 so we write that to a block and then we give it the tool number that we want to use so in this case it would be T75 I believe 
G99 calls for a constant service speed, and G98 calls for a, the spindle's always going to be at this speed. I believe that's how that works out. Basically, that is just for drilling, so you want to keep the drilling speed at the same the whole time. And on down. And this is just saying that I want to use the B axis. So right now we have the variable Z output set with the B word instead of the Z. So we want to use a B0 instead of a Z0. So that's what all this is doing right here. And like I said, NYC, CNC, awesome tutorial on how to do this. I'm just showing you this because I can help whoever needs help with a post processor, possibly. And showing you that pretty much a lot is possible with editing post processors to get whatever you need from a machine which is extremely cool and I'm so glad that Fusion allows you to do that. I'm pretty sure other cam softwares also allow you to do that stuff but this is, they may, I feel like they make it really easy. So let's find out where we use the next B axis here. And this goes to the end, so on section end, so whenever we get to the end of the program, it'd be on down here or on the drilling cycle, what do we want to do? So we want to call a T70 to cancel the tool offset and then send it home with a B0. So that cancels everything. So now we're machine offsets. And the M90 represents the weight. I, I really, every time I want to wait for the B axis to be done before I start moving the X and B, X and Z main turret. And then we want to put a G100 to signify the end of the B axis program. And the M40 calls the B-axis program between G101 and G100. M90 is that other weight, so you need two M90s, one inside the B-axis program and one outside, just to show that you want to wait for everything. Also, it's really good to comment stuff. And then we want an M66 to call tool position 6 on the B-axis turret, and that, like I said, there's it's always going to be empty, so we don't want the axes to hit each other. And then, since this is the end, I set B axis equal to zero. And after that, that should be it for that. Yep. So the main takeaway here is B axis, I just set a variable, which is a register. So every time it goes to make a, a tool move, it's looking to see if, this, if, the, if it wants the B axis or if it wants the main turret X and Z axis. So that is basically all I did in this entire thing and then just looked to see where I needed to change where I needed to put FL statements to look for the specific B axis variable which I set right here in this tooling data function with the case one so I set it equal to one in case one it's it seems extremely hard to understand but once you look at some tutorials on YouTube holy crap it makes it so much easier and you can bring up some files here so basically this is that same program I had and I can see exactly where I set things so tool 75 right there and I can double click this B I, I set it equal right there and like I said with this one since we've had the Z output format equal to a B word it changes the, where it would be a Z to a B which is really cool and then on the on section end down here double click that and see exactly where this T70 got written in this program so go check out that tutorial if you need help with any post processors I would be glad to help you so I know this was very confusing to try and understand but if you stuck with me this long thank you for watching